The New York Jets have officially been eliminated from the playoffs, so we're going to examine how we got here, what big decisions are coming, and why Jets fans may have some hope for the future today on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. You are Locked On NFL Scouting with the Draft Dude, your daily podcast for NFL and college football scouting, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's better than this? It's guys, me and dudes here on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. We're the Draft Dudes. I'm Joe Marino from Locked On Bills. He's Kyle Krabs from Locked On Dolphins. And we are your NFL experts here with you daily to talk team building across the league on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast with the Draft Dudes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'd like to thank you for making Locked On NFL Scouting your first listen every day. And a big welcome and shout out to our everydayers. You know who you are. Those of you who never miss a single episode, we appreciate y'all being here very, very much. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Joe, we are here to talk about the New York Jets as two AFC East brethren. We have gathered to pour one out for this Jets season, and it. If you're a fan of football, regardless who you root for, uh, I think you're bummed out with the way that the Jets season went because with the Aaron Rodgers storyline and that obviously when we talk about what went wrong, that's front row center for what went wrong with this football team. And it felt like this team never recovered for whatever reason. There's lots of speculation. We could talk about speculation as to why uh, the pivot was never there. But you look across the league and you see some of these other backup quarterback options that may have been more appealing than what they had with Zach Wilson. I don't know. It's I I wanted to see what it was going to look like. I was wanted to see what Aaron Rodgers and his nucleus of players from Green Bay getting dropped in with that defense. I wanted to see what that looked like. We had high expectations for the Jets. We had them as a double digit win team. I think we had them ten and seven mm-hmm. when we did our our preseason schedule prediction, and they floated around eliminate week 15 you know it wasn't an abject disaster at least with the defensive side of the ball but i think this is a really good embodiment of when you don't play complimentary football for three months that side of the ball wears down too and and that's why i think you're looking at the jets right now and where they measure metric wise on both sides of the ball and it just feels overwhelming because it was not supposed to be this bad for either side yeah this team was all in on aaron Rodgers. that was the the story of the league, right? All off season long, the Jets, Aaron Rodgers, what does this look like? Can they break all the droughts? Can they have a winning record? Can they win the East? Are they Super Bowl contenders? Well, how did we get here? Well, part of the big reason why is Aaron Rodgers got hurt on the first offensive drive of the season. And so all of that went down the drain. And like they had a decent initial bounce back, but but sustaining it was obviously a major issue. And Certainly, there's a lot of flowers for the defensive side of the football, but offensively, team's just not good enough. And, of course, the quarterback position is front and center in that conversation. But we've seen other teams be able to make it work with their backup quarterback. The Bengals have won three in a row without Joe Burrow, right? Like, you've seen mm-hmm. Minnesota's found a way to keep their season alive down to multiple quarterbacks. Uh, Colts, right? The, the, the examples are all over the Browns four they're on their fourth quarterback, dude. They're probably going to be the fifth seed in the AFC. So, you know, it's the quarterback thing is front and center, but it's not just losing Aaron Rodgers. It's leaning into Zach Wilson, knowing who Zach Wilson is and not making a play for a better option, but offensively, it's just not good enough. Dead last in the NFL in total offense, second worst scoring offense. And for as big as the quarterback injuries have been, The offensive line injuries have been insane. This team, I think the best way that you can do this is look at how many players have played each spot. They've had four left tackles. They've had five centers. They've had eight right guards. They've had five right tackles. Shout out Lincoln Tomlinson. You've played every snap at left guard. But like, dude, (laughs) what are you supposed to do, man? You don't have a quarterback and your freaking offensive line is hurt every single second of the year. So I think that's front and center here. Yeah. And I think the frustrating thing from New York's perspective is, and it kind of comes into key decisions a little bit, but not really. Uh, There's a separate conversation to be a part of that. 
What was Joe Douglas brought in to do? Back when it started. And where has Joe Douglas made a ton of investments? In the offensive line. Offensive line, yeah. And it just hasn't. The investments have been so intermittent. And like you mentioned, Lakin Tomlinson. And Lakin Tomlinson down as a hit for the team. Lakin Tomlinson is entering into a contract year where he's owed $18.8 million against the cap. And he's already got a void year on the back end of that in 2025, in which he's going to cost you $5 million against the cap and not be on the team because of how they max restructured his contract this year to drop his cap hit to under $11 million. So you're going to have a lot of work to do. You're going to have a lot of temptation with how to spend your premium asset to get a bridge beyond the 41-year-old quarterback with the torn Achilles that you have coming back. I don't know. There's just a lot of questions. And as you mentioned, offensive line needs a lot of work. You need to get Aaron Rodgers back and get him healthy. I still think you probably need more in the way of weapons. Dalvin Cook was brought in to be the running back, too, for this team. Now they have some young players. They parted ways with, with Michael Carter, but they still have Izzy Banikan, who they drafted in the middle rounds this year's draft. should probably play him at some point this year, see what you, what you have in him. Yeah, you have to. Because even Brees... I think Brees' vision, I, I thought Robert Sala, you know, he he was criticized for his feedback on Brees Hall a few weeks back, talking about needing to take the singles and doubles. That's been yeah, the book the on Brees since I was State. Yeah. So I, I think needing to have more viable options for your backfield, give, give Izzy Banacan a chance. Let's see what it looks like the rest of the way. Yeah, I mean, it's it's quarterback, it's offensive line, and I, I'm glad you have it down. I have it right here, lack of weapons. And we did this podcast. Like, there was this big conversation this offseason about how Aaron Rodgers was stepping into this unprecedented situation in terms of the talent around him. Are we kidding? Are we kidding? They have one meaningful wide receiver, and it's Garrett Wilson. Alan Lazard is an absolute albatross of a contract that they're stuck to for at least one more season. They don't have a number two receiver. They don't have – I mean – do they have a starting running back? Brees Hall feels like a good, like, explosive change of pace back, but he doesn't get the grimy three. Dalvin Cook's a flop as a free agent. Anybody that watched the tape last year should have had had some concern there about him not being able to maximize what he's been throughout his career. And so you have all these problems on offense, all these problems on offense. And the one thing you do have is a good defense. And because you're so bad on offense, it just takes away from it. it you know what I mean? Like, right. You can't be the best version of yourself on defense when you're not. You're the worst third down team in the league. You're the worst red zone team in the league. You're, you don't get any yards, and you're putting the defense in bad situations every single week. Oh, by the way, the one thing that was a concern with your defense was kind of stopping the run. Al Woods goes down at nose tackle, and you're playing three techniques at one tech, right? When Quentin Jefferson and Solomon Thomas, dude, those are not one techs. So you have like a very incomplete situation there, and I think teams kind of figured out they could have some success running the football, and you didn't have to just throw the ball over the Jets. So I think they kind of spoiled the best part of their operation by not being better with their offensive personnel. So I don't know. Like I, I never bought into this being this this juggernaut of a roster, and I think that played out. I Here's my my stat that best embodies the New York Jets and their, their, the dire situation that their defense was put in so frequently this year. Mm. This team – is uh, second in the NFL in defensive yards per possession. So opposing offenses against the Jets, 24.2 yards per possession. That's second in the league. And yet they are 25th in scoring, opposing drives that end in scoring. Hmm. 25th, over 30, 32%. So one out of every three drives ends with the opponent getting points against a team that is second in the league in fewest yards allowed defensively per opposing possession. Yeah, that's insane. Another way to another Top. way to look at this: they're fifth fifth in net yards per fourth in net yards per attempt, five point one net yards per attempt on the season. They are tenth at four point zero yards per carry allowed. Those are two objectively good numbers. Opposing offenses have ran the ball four hundred forty six times against the Jets this season, dead last in the league by a lot. 
Teams get up on you, take the air out of the ball, and they run it down. Big decisions ahead for the Jets. We're going to break all of those down here in just a second, so stick with us. But look, you shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. They've got killer deals on last-minute tickets, all-in prices. They give you a view from your seat and a best price guarantee. I mean, simply put, game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. The app is awesome. Love the flash deal. Sometimes I just log in, see what flash deals are available to me. And when you buy tickets from game time, they send them right to your phone. You don't have to dig through emails to get the tickets. They go right to your phone. So snag the tickets without the stress with game time. Download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on NFL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I know we have to talk about big decisions. Can I can I just make one more observation about this Jets team? Of course. Because they're currently sitting at five and nine. Five and nine. They have Washington at Cleveland at New England to close. Okay, so some winnable games. They may win a few more. But as things currently stand at five and nine, one of their big time decisions is going to be what to do with this first overall pick because there's a slew of teams that are all collected with five wins right now, starting at fifth in the draft order. Yeah. I can't help but sit here and look at the way that this season played out. And Jets fans would tell you we were uh, the Falcons game and the Chiefs game or the first Patriots game away from being 500 and having a legit chance and Rodgers coming back. Is that a better indication of where this team is, or is it you were four turnovers and a punt return against the Bills, Jalen Hurts pooping his pants and throwing you an interception to gift you a game-winning touchdown that they let you score on, and the New York Giants completely choking away their victory in the final minute of that game when they you held them to negative nine passing yards? Whether it was at DeVito's first start? Yeah. Yeah, and the rain and all that, yeah. You were those three games, which are like the the games were gifted to you from currently being, I'm do the math, 2-12. and 12? So I think that's, that's the part that it kind of stings. If this te- season was going to be a disaster, and it's been a disaster, yeah. you, you'd almost hope it was more of a disaster. Because you'd be you in a position always to do that. Even if you're going to take Aaron Rodgers off, draft a quarterback and have a long-term answer at the position. And then at least the suffering this year was, was you could point to that and say it's worth it. Yeah. I I think it's a dangerous thing that fans can do sometimes be like, well, if, if these things didn't happen, then we'd be here. Well, sometimes you don't think about the things that went favorably that got you here. The truth is your record is what you, what your record is. Right. And I think you can do that for any team. Kyle's we, Think about these decisions, man. I I start with right at the top. Like, are you cool rolling with Joe Douglas as your GM after failed chances at quarterback, not building up this offense well enough? Are you cool with Robert Sala? Is he the leader for this team? Are they, you know, that's going to get them out of this rut that they've been in for years? Nathaniel Hackett, is that your really your offensive coordinator? Would he would he be anybody's offensive coordinator if Aaron Rodgers wasn't a quarterback after what he's shown in Denver? And now, of course, no. this year with this team, like I think you. And then on top of that, it's like, are you? I think the biggest decision that you have to ask yourself and make is, are you really going to allow Aaron Rodgers at forty-one years old, coming off of an Achilles, have? I mean, literally, just have you, have you by the throat? You know, like calling the shots for your operation. It's it's not. I don't think it's healthy. I don't think it's a good place to be in. And so I think they got to figure out what they want to do with all that. I think our answer is different than the Jets answer. Right? Yeah. Because our answer is no, we're not comfortable with this. We're not comfortable with the coaching record. We're not comfortable with some of the, you know, Joe Douglas had one of the best drafts of the millennium in 2022 with Sauce Gardner and Brees Hall and Garrett Wilson and Ruckert looks like a player and Jermaine Johnson who they went up and got because he slid in the draft. Yeah. Yeah. Outstanding draft class. 
if you look at some of these other investors, and Tippmann's been a good hit for them this year. He's been a good interior offensive line. Credit where credit's due there. The contributions for Will McDonald as your first round pick this year in your win now window. Yeah. Probably leave you wanting. The previous year was Zach Wilson, Elijah Bear Tucker, a good player, good hit. Unfortunately, injuries the last two years have, have derailed his seasons. But then Elijah Moore was 34th overall pick. He's not on the team anymore. Michael Carter was your next draft selection. You cut him after giving Dalvin Cook a, the bag and drafting, what, two more running backs since? So you hit on Michael Carter, hypothetically, and then you draft two more running backs, sign Dalvin Cook, and cut him. You drafted him in 2021. Everything after that's one 150 down the queue and further down as far as like the, the actual pick. So you try not to give anybody too much of, of a hard time if picks don't manifest there because st statistically speaking, they rarely do. 2020, Mackay backed in. Has he been good? No, he's a da disaster. Didn't play for two years. What, he came back and he stinks. What's Denzel Mims doing? Yeah. Off the team? Uh, how about Ashton Davis? How about Jabari Zuniga, who's out of the league, and you picked him 79th overall? Oh, by the way, another running back, LaMichael P. Ryan. Go back to 2019, Quinn and Williams, hard to miss that one. Their next pick's Ja'Kai Polite. What's he doing? He's out of the league. Yeah. Like, that's the, the, the round two and round three history of Joe Douglas right now. So you give him flowers for Joe Tipman, and you give him flowers for 2022. There's a lot of red on this ledger, if we're being yeah. honest about what the rest of the draft record looks like for Joe Douglas. It's concerning. I think where their decisions get easier to me, Kyle, and I know you've looked at this as well, I don't think there's hard personnel decisions to make. To me, no. it's very straightforward. They come in, they don't have a ton of cap space, $14 million in space. That's 20th in the NFL. But their expiring contracts, like what are you really worried about with the expiring contracts? Jordan Whitehead and Bryce Huff? Can I add another? Uh, there should probably be a conversation about moving on from CJ Mosley. I know he's been good, but from a cap perspective, $21 million hit. Yeah. For an aging linebacker. And it's again, I know he's been good, but, but, yeah. you know, Will, Williams has been good too at linebacker. He's a heck of a player. You can get a lot a good deal. there. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. you could restructure his deal too and save some money, save a few yeah. million dollars. So I'm definitely bringing Bryce Huff back. It makes yeah. the Will McDonald contract look worse, but I don't care. That dude's a baller. Yep. He's an absolute monster off the edge. Yeah, McDonald, Jermaine Johnson, Bryce Huff, John Franklin Myers. You feel pretty good about that. Mm -hmm. But like your other, your other expiring contracts, Carl Lawson, Dwayne Brown, Dalvin Cook, Quentin Jefferson, Randall Cobb, Connor McGovern, Al Woods, like, I'm not stressing about bringing those guys back. And uh, of these guys, I would bring back Whitehead, Huff. If the price is right, and I think it would be Quentin Jefferson. Solomon Thomas has been a good rotational guy for you. And the rest of it. Who cares? Gone for me. Yeah, It's very easy yeah. for me to identify who I would want to bring back and not. Uh, cut candidates, Lake and Tomlinson, you can free up 8 million and I know it's tough. He's been like your consistent player, I guess, in terms of availability, CG Ozoma is an easy, easy cut for me as well to save 5.3 mil. I wouldn't do Lakin. the 18 million, the $19 million cap. It is monster. But as a guy who has been available, roll with it. Is, is he is he worth more to me at 18 to play and actually have an anchor available at a spot, or is he worth more to me to pay him $10 million against the cap than not be here? For the extra $8 million, bring, bring I'd rather eight. Yeah. That's Those are their options. The restructure candidates, I think they have three. Quinn and Williams, you free up $11.7 million. That feels easy to me. John Franklin yep. Myers, 8.6. You mentioned Quincy Williams, you get three and a quarter million. Uh, on that side of things, extension candidates, maybe Tyler Conklin, who's in the last year of his deal, DJ Reed in the last year of his deal, Michael Carter, the cornerback in the last year of his deal. So if you're looking for ways to create cap space, I think those are your best opportunities. And then I'd do something with CJ Mosley. I don't think you can have a twenty one and a half million dollar cap hit in 2024 with him on the last year of his deal. So 
it maybe it's an extension. You spread some things out, a uh, modest extension, right? I don't think you want to get too much further locked in there, but uh, that's so that's kind of their opportunities. That- that's a good point. And he has two void years on the back anyway for 2025 yeah. and 2026. He's owed $17 million in cash. So you can take 15 of that, make it a signing bonus, give him a three-year deal and extend that out. You could probably save, I don't want to say half. Close. You could save close to half if you gave him a three-year extension or a two-year yeah. extension on top of the last year of his deal. Yeah. And kick out the $15 million in salary. And then it's a, okay, I'm going to gonna do the math. Please stick with me. Okay. So we're going to take $15 million of a $17 million base structure and we're going to divide that out. So that's across three years. So that becomes $5 million a year. He'd have a remaining $2 million base salary. He already has of his initial signing bonus from his first contract is one and a half million dollars. And then they already restructured his contract once to put in 2022 to put the two void years on the back of it. And that was worth two million nine hundred seventy six thousand dollars if you gave him a two-year extension took 50 million dollars of the 17 that he's owed made it a signing bonus you could drop that salary cap hit down to 11.47 million dollars versus About the half. 20 21.47 million that it is right now yeah so yeah yeah give him an extension if you don't want to interrupt your your defense yeah uh, real quick on other decisions, the fifth-year option, Zach Wilson, that's a no, right? Nope. $19 million, you're not picking that up. Elijah Vera Tucker, the other one, $15 million is what that's going to cost for the fifth-year mm-hmm. option. If he's healthy, he's worth it, right? There's two years in a row with injury issues. So I think that's something they'll have to vet through. I think there, there's been enough good examples of teams passing on the fifth-year option, and then still if that player m- manifests a yeah. good season, uh, I probably would not do that fifth year option either. And that's less of an indictment of Eric Tucker and more of an indictment of just the injuries the last two seasons. And I wouldn't want to have a fully yeah. guaranteed fifth year that I'd have to work through. Yep, I agree. You can still get that extension done. Hello, Austin Jackson, Miami Dolphins. All right, we're going to turn this conversation positive here to close things out. The true Levy right Grail portion of our conversation is coming up. So be sure to stick with us. But folks, when you're Hiring for your small business, you want to be certain that you have as many top-tier candidates available as possible to interview. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats right now and might not have the time or resources to hire. Well, thankfully, with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy. And they even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions. So post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Fight on, my men. I am hurt. Hurt, but I am not slain. Not sting. So I will lay me down and rest a while. Bleed a while. Rise. Bleed a while. Darn it. No, rise and I'll fight rise. again. There it is. Close. Can you remind any anybody? Because Jets fans probably aren't familiar with Marv Levy's battle cry. Just the Levy Grail, what is it? Since yeah, we're doing it, this... we're gonna get into a bunch of these now. Yeah, it's um Marv Levy, uh coach of the Bills through their four consecutive Super Bowl losses. Um, this was this was the rallying cry for the team to like, hey, you lost again. You got to the top of the mountain. You fell down, but let's rally and, and get back to the stage. Now they kept getting back to the stage and never won it. But this was that rallying cry, the the reason for hope. Let's get it together. And so for the rest of this conversation about the Jets, Kyle and I will do our very best to be optimistic about the future and why Gang Green Nation uh, should have some hope. And. I think my first talking point here, Kyle, is that, and I kind of mentioned this already, I don't think there are hard decisions personnel-wise. You have reasonable resources in terms of cap space, reasonable opportunities to create space, and like, I don't think you're stressing over this daunting list of expiring contracts or uh, hard decisions with fifth-year options. It feels very straightforward to me. It's just a matter of your next investments, the next round of investments of your cap dollars, of your draft capital, we got to start hitting here. And I don't think you go into this with like just 
sweating bullets over your personnel roster choices that you have to make with your existing contracts. Right. So I think as long as there's an honest conversation about where you're at as a football team and for Robert Sala and Joe Douglas, assuming those guys that brain trust is back with Aaron being where Aaron's at, I think as long as everybody's operating with the same understanding, which is that we have a two to three year window. And if it works, everybody will get the grace to go through the transition period. And as long as everybody's on the same page there and your personnel moves reflect that, I think that is where the Jets have an opportunity to get back on the horse, have the season that a lot of people thought that they were going to have this year, next year. Because you have, say what you will about the weapons, Joe, you, you have a quarterback that has established chemistry with a number of skilled players on the roster, even if you want upgrades available. You have a lot of youth that is going to continue to uh, respectively as each individual continue to develop and get better. You know, progression's not linear. Development's not linear. But guys like Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall, Jermaine Johnson, all those guys that Joe Tipman now coming into year two, all of those guys that you regard as hits, they're going to take some level of a step forward. The vast majority of them will. So you have this rising tide of like the floor of the roster. And I think if I'm the Jets, I'm not making any long-term plays with what their playbook's going to be this year. My sixth overall pick, I'm trying to draft an impact player, probably an offensive tackle in this year's class. Mm -hmm. I'm maybe looking to uh, trade my day two pick. Are my day two picks with Joe Douglas's track record going to be more impactful for me if I spend them or if I use them on established NFL talent, you've already used the two on Aaron Rodgers, So you don't have that. You right. got a three. You got a three. What is my third round pick going to be more valuable to me? By the way, Jalen Ramsey just went for a three in Hunter Henry or Hunter Henry, a uh, Hunter long. You can get a meaningful player for an asset like that. It sounds like to me, you're saying if you're going to go all in, go all in. Right. Don't ride the fence. This is not the time. You went all in, and this year went the way it went. Don't ride the fence. That's a first-class ticket to everybody getting fired. Go all in because if it doesn't work, you're going to be fired anyway. But if you ride the fence, I promise you, you're going to be out after next year too. Yeah, that number six pick is going to be a real opportunity for them. I think they're they they're going to get an offensive tackle. Um, there's going to be one there. We, what I mean. We just did our top 10 prospects last week. I had four tackles in yeah. the top 10. I think you, you might've had more, right? <laughs> like, so I mean, I, I yeah. Me, yeah. you'll find something there. If not, I mean, you will, but uh, could have a chance at Malik neighbors, right? If you're really looking for a, a weapon there in the passing game, uh, if I'm opt if I'm looking for optimism for the jets, I like, I like some of my young talent. I mean, Quinton Williams is locked in. It's one of the impact defensive tackles in the NFL. Quincy Williams, that linebacker, has really been a fine for them, and he's he's got a, a very modest contract extension. Sauce Gardner, you know, we know what he is. Jermaine Johnson has really emerged. Uh, DJ Reed's a nice player for them. Bryce Huff, I think they should bring him back. Like, there's some nice players. You mentioned Joe Tittman, Will McDonald as a first round pick. Those guys now have some reps. They have some time on task that will help them moving forward. So you got some some blanks to fill in, but I think you can look at some of your nucleus and. And feel decent about it. Not to mention, you know, like Aaron Rodgers. You're, I mean, that's that's your ticket, right? Like for as much as we can talk about filling in the blanks, it's about Aaron Rodgers getting back and and being Aaron Rodgers, and that's going to be all the difference in the world for this operation. Yeah. Anything else? Well, I mean, I it's it's going to be another ride, right? Like another interesting Jets off season who's pulling the strings, what decisions they make. Like, I'm going to be fascinated to see how this goes. And you feel like New England's going to hit reset here. And it's just going to be a, an interesting dynamic in this AFC East in terms of as these resets happen and as you see where the Bills and the Dolphins are, are at, you know, at the top of this division, how do these cycles intertwine and weave and get on top of each other? And, like, can you get ahead of it? Or are you going to kind of get, continue to go down a path that's going to put you 
further away from getting ahead of it. It's a tough spot to be, but you get Aaron Rodgers back, and I think that's 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 really what this conversation started with and where it should end. Yep, and be prepared for another offseason cycle of the headlines being dominated by the Jets. That's the New York market, all the names that they have, uh, the intrigue around it, as you mentioned. Be a fascinating offseason for the Jets. Uh, we both have our respective opinions on, on where we would take it. Uh, we'll see where the Jets actually do. But that's going to do it for us here on this episode of Locked On Apple Scouting. I'm Kyle Krabs. He is Joe Marino. We appreciate you guys checking out the show. You can find us on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Make it a great rest of your day. We're out of here.